Hi everyone, today I'm going to have a look at a new modeling add-on for Blender. The add-on is called Round Inset and it's by Kushiro CG. I will put a link to the product page at Blender Market in the video description. You can currently buy the add-on for $8. Once you've purchased the add-on, you will get a zip file that you can install in the usual manner and once you've done that, you will find the add-on in your preferences in the add-on section here. The current version is 2.0.1. In order to access the tool, you will need to be in edit mode. So I'm going to select this object here, tab into edit mode. And if you right click, you will find round inset right here at the bottom. Now this is a little bit inconvenient. So what I usually do is right click and add it to my quick favorites. You could also assign a shortcut if you wanted to. First of all, you have to select a polygon and usually it has to be either one angon or one polygon. Unlike Blender's inset tool, round inset does not give you the option to have a selection of polygons and inset the entire selection. You can only inset individual polygons. On an object like this, you would have to convert the top surface to an angon anyway in order to get clean results. But in other cases, it might be useful to have the option to actually be able to inset a selection of polygons. So let's select this top angon here and I'm going to my quick favorites and use round inset. And as you can see, you will get an inset right away. We cannot make changes in the viewport interactively, but we have the option to make any changes here in the operator panel. Right at the bottom, we have an option to prevent overlapping. This option is checked by default and I see no reason to uncheck this. It's really useful. At the top, we can change the inset size so we can make this bigger. And if I make this too big, despite the fact that I have prevent overlap checked here, I will get overlapping geometry. However, if I change the size of the corners, it will prevent overlapping of the points here. You can also change the size to a negative number and do something like this and then extrude the end one up, for example. So let's go back a few steps and let's do that again. I'm going to change that inset to something like this maybe. The next option that we have is the size threshold. And what this does is it shifts anything that is below the number you've entered here. And what that means is that if you have an issue with the inset, for example, if it's uneven, you can try and use the size threshold to, to fix that issue. On this particular object, the size threshold won't do anything, but I've prepared a second example where we can use the threshold to or fix a problem with the inset. I'm going to show you that in a minute. The last option we have is the scaling of the corners. So we can make these bigger. As you can see, by default, the inset that is created is even on all of the corners and the radius on the inside is the same as the radius on the outside. And that is also a difference to Blender's inset tool, which will scale the inside corners up and scale down the outside corners. Now, in some cases, maybe that's exactly what you want, but then you would have to use Blender's inset tool instead of round inset. Being able to scale the corners is a nice option though. And as you can see, again, in this case, we're getting smaller corners, but everything's nice and even. And if we make this too big, at some point, we will get overlapping vertices, but because we have checked this option here, we won't really see that. However, if you do something like this, you probably don't want to because, you know, the inset doesn't look very nice. But if for some reason you do, make sure to merge the vertices because while this tool prevents overlapping of the vertices, we still have double vertices here. So actually we do have overlapping geometry that needs to be fixed. So in this case, I'm just going to reset this to the default and we get a nice and clean inset like this with not a lot of work. I'm just going to undo that. And just for the sake of comparison, I'm going to show you how the inset tool works. So with the angon selected, I'm going to use the inset tool. And at first there is not much difference. 
The only thing is, as you can see, the outside corners are getting smaller, the more we increase the inset and the inside corners are getting bigger. And also we're running into issues because of that much sooner. We, we can't really make the inset as big as with round inset. If you have something like this, it's a royal pain to clean this up manually. And even if you have add-ons like Mesh Machine, it's still a bit of work. I can show you that quickly maybe. If you have Mesh Machine, you could select these edges here. And we also need this one and this one. And then use Mesh Machine's unfortunately named Unfuck tool to clean that up. However, Mesh Machine can only do one corner at a time, so it will still be a bit of work. But in any case, that's better than having to do everything manually. So that's how the inset tool would work on something like this. Let's move on to the second example. And I've prepared this object here, which is a little more tricky. Now, I've mentioned before that in a lot of situations, it can't be avoided to turn an area into n-gons in order to get clean results. In this particular case, though, it's not really necessary to get rid of the geometry at the center. But if you use round inset, you have to. Because what happens is if I select these polygons here and use round inset, something like this happens. And it's not because I've changed the settings here. You can see everything's at default now. This happens because round inset insets each polygon individually. And there's no way you can inset an entire selection. So that's one difference to Blender's inset tool, which would allow us to inset the entire selection or individual polygons. But of course, we would run into issues as you can see much sooner and the more we increase the inset the bigger the problems get. So what we need to do here is turn these faces here into an n-gon by using the F key here. It would be better to do this at the bottom as well but let's see what happens if we use round inset on this n-gon here right now. So let's use round inset and you can see some areas here at the top well, it's the only area where the inset actually works. We have an issue here at the bottom, which is due to the additional vertices we have here. And we also have issues in those smaller corners here on the side. Let me just increase the inset a little bit. Let's bring this up to around three. Now, this is one of those situations where the size threshold becomes important. And in order to be able to control the number you're getting, I would recommend that you use the shift key when you left click and drag because you can fine tune the numbers. As you can see around 45, the issue at the bottom gets resolved. We need to bring this down a little bit further to around 0.25 to also fix the corners on the side here. And as you can see, we're now getting a pretty nice and clean looking result. So in summary, I'm very happy with this add-on. The price could be a little bit cheaper, maybe around $6, but I do use it a lot. And it's really handy for getting nice and even and clean insets on more complex shapes like this one here. So the only two things I would like to have in round inset is an option to, to automatically merge vertices that are too close together and the option to be able to inset a selection of polygons rather than just a single polygon. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.